Okay, so the last thing in chapter 13 that I'm going to talk about, we're going to skip all of 13.6 because it's technically optional. I don't think anyone ever covers it. Um, is this notion of uh, three planes we never talk about. But we have the normal plane, the rectifying plane, and the osculating plane. And the idea is this. The normal plane... Right. Remember how we describe a plane, right? A plane has a normal vector and a point, right? So that's how we can find the equation of a plane, and that's from 12.5. And so the normal plane, then, the normal is the, is the unit tangent vector. It's t, okay? Well, not unit tangent, but the tangent itself, okay? So t is going to be... Uh, the tangent vector, or is it the unit tangent? I think it is the unit tangent, right? So the normal is going to be a unit tangent vector. Um, for a rectifying plane, um, the normal is going to be uh, the normal vector, okay? And then for the osculating plane, the normal is going to be uh, the binormal vector, okay? So in 13.5.7, then it asks you to find... Um, all three of these planes. So it says R of t is equal to cosine, sine, and negative one. Okay, and at t equals pi over four, find uh, these three planes. All right, it wants you to find what the normal rectifying and osculating plane is. I don't want to find all three because that's going to take too long. So I'm going to show you guys how to find the normal, uh, the rectifying plane. Okay, so we're going to find the rectifying plane in this one. You technically need to find all three, but once I find one of them, you guys should know how to do the rest. Okay, so how do you find the rectifying plane? Well, we got to find the bind. We got to find the unit tangent normal, right? And to do this, we got to start taking these freaking derivatives. So this is negative sine t, cosine t, zero. Okay magnitude of our prime of t uh, is, is it's that's one okay uh, you can believe me if you don't believe me it's whatever so the unit tangent vector then uh, t of t is going to just be negative sine t cosine t zero okay and now what do we want now we want uh, now we want the derivative of this guy so dt or t prime of t Okay, and what is that? That's negative cosine t, negative sine of t, zero, okay? And again, the magnitude of t prime of t is still going to be one, and that's just because when you have one cosine and one sine term, it, that's just going to be one, okay? And then so um, what do we have then? The unit normal vector, okay, n of t is going to be negative cosine of t, negative sine of t, comma, zero. And like I said, I said this is going to be the uh, this is going to be the normal to the rectifying plane. If I can write, okay. And and the fact that the unit normal is the normal to the rectifying plane, so you got the the normal is the normal. Uh, that's just a coincidence, okay? Um, again, uh, if we were asked to find the equation of the osculating plane, we'd have to find the binormal, all right? So, uh, again, uh, we're only finding the rectifying plane in this video because I'm too lazy to do the rest. And so now what we want to do then is evaluate this um, at pi over 4, right? Because it makes no sense to say, oh, my normal, uh, the normal to my plane is some cosine term because that's not a real coefficient. Well, it is a real coefficient, but it's a coefficient in terms of t, which doesn't make sense. And we have this t equals pi over 4. So n at pi over 4 is equal to, this is going to be negative root 2 over 2. And this is also going to be negative root 2 over 2, 0. All right. That's cool. And OK, so this is my normal vector to my plane, right? So remember, the plane has the uh, equals little n, right? The normal vector to the rectifying plane. All right, and now what do I need? I need a point, right? So how am I going to find a point um, that's in my plane? Well, the whole idea of the tangent, the normal and the binormal is that if you have a curve in space, um, at this point in time, you know, 
here's your tangent, uh, here's your normal, and then you got some binormal that's perpendicular to these guys. All right, so the point that they all originate from is going to just be R evaluated at the time, okay? So now the point on the plane is going to be R at pi over four, which is, uh, looks like root two over two, root two over two, comma negative one, okay? So now I have my normal and I have my point, and so my plane equation is going to be uh, negative root two over two x plus ne uh, or minus root two over two y uh, plus zero z is equal to d, right? And we plug this point in, right? We take, we plug the points in, and I get then negative root two over two times root two over two. Uh, minus root 2 over 2 times root 2 over 2, and then plus 0 times negative 1 is equal to d. And so we see that d, uh, this becomes negative 1 half minus 1 half equals d. So d is equal to negative 1, and then we replace d with a negative 1. And here's our plane equation for the rectifying plane. Okay, and therefore... Uh, we're done. And what, what what can we do? I mean, we can multiply everything through by negative root two. And so you can then, uh, if you multiply a negative square root of two in, you get x plus y is equal to root two. And that might be a better, you know, it, it might look nicer um, to write our plane uh, in, this th in this way. And you know, the two are the same. It doesn't matter. I uh, just don't have the zero z here. And uh, that's good. All right, so that's how you find the rectifying plane. You find the binormal plane and the normal plane the same way. So uh, I'll tell you the guys the answers to uh, the normal plane and the bi uh, the normal plane and the oscillating plane. So if you pause it, the video right here if you don't want to see the answers. Okay, so hopefully you worked out what the normal plane and the oscillating plane would be. Um, so the normal plane, uh, you should get da, 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 negative x plus y is equal to zero. Okay, so that should be the equation you get for the normal plane. And then for the osculating plane, uh, you should get then z is equal to negative one. All right. And yeah, uh, that's it. So again, you find the osculating plane and the normal plane using the fact that these guys are the normal vectors. And for this guy, it was x plus y is equal to negative root two. And, oh wait, no, damn it, this is not negative root two. It's positive root two. Okay, good, 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 good. I had it right down there. So this is positive root two. Whew. Okay, I'm glad I didn't make that mistake twice. And there you go. So that's how you find these three planes. Super useless, let's be honest. Uh, I've never seen this being used anywhere um, in application. And I guess it's just something you need to know for this class. So, okay, we're done with chapter 13. We're going to move on to chapter 14. I'm going to skip, I think I'm going to skip the first part of chapter 14, 14, 1. Um, that part is a lot of theory and not a lot of plug and chug, which defeats the purpose of this video so yeah we're not gonna i'm not gonna cover that i guess i might do one example we'll see and then 14.2 is limits which are my uh one of my favorite things to cover um but although it's one of the students least favorite <laughs> topics in the class so uh yeah see you guys in the next video where we're gonna go on to chapter 14